So mom went off to Alaska, huh? Yeah. She sort of left you in charge? Well, she knew I was coming down here, so she let me have the place. You keeping the plants watered? Keeping the sink clean? She don't even like a single tea leaf in the sink, you know. Yeah, I know. She gonna be up there for a long time? I don't know. Well, it's kind of nice for you, huh? You got the whole place to yourself. Yeah, it's great. You got groceries? Coffee? Yeah. That's good. The real coffee from the bean? Yeah, you want some? No, I brought some. Yeah, yeah, help yourself to whatever's. I will. Don't worry about me. I'm not the one you need to worry about. I can, uh. I'm not bothering you, am I? No, it's all right. That's good. I mean, I don't want to break into your concentration or nothing. It's okay. That's good. I mean, I realize your line of work, it demands a lot of concentration. You probably think that I'm not fully able to comprehend something like that. Like what? You know, what you're doing. It's just a little research. You may not know this, but I did a little art myself once. You did? Yeah. I did some of that. What'd you do? Never mind what I did. So, you went down to see the old man, huh? Yeah, I seen him. How's he doing? Same. Yeah, I went out there too, you know? Yeah, what do you want, an award? Yeah. He told me all about you. What'd he say? Don't worry, he told me. Well. You don't have to say nothing. I wasn't. Yeah, you were gonna make something up. You gonna be down here very longly? Might be. Well, you can stay here as long as I'm here. Well, I don't need your permission, do I? No. Well, she's my mother too, right? Right. So, uh... You don't know how long you'll be down here then? Depends. Yeah, mostly on the houses. Houses? Yeah, houses, electrical devices, stuff like that. I gotta make a little tour first. Look, Lee, why don't you just try another neighborhood, all right? Well, what's wrong with this neighborhood? Well, uh, our mother just happens to live here, that's all. Nobody's gonna know. All they're gonna know is something's missing. That's all. Look. You're gonna get picked up if you wander around here at night. Me? I'm gonna get picked up. But what about you? You stick out like a sore thumb. You think that you're regular looking? I have got too much to deal with here without worrying about- Well, don't worry about me. I haven't been anywhere near you in what, five years? Now, isn't that true? Yeah. So don't worry about me. I'm a free agent. All right. Now. Oh. All I want to do is borrow your car. No. Just for a day, one day. No. 
I won't go outside of a 25 mile radius. I I'm you. not loaning you my car, Lee. That's all there is to it. Well, I'll just take the damn thing. Lee, look, I don't want any trouble, all right? Oh, that's a dumb line. You get paid for coming up with a line like that. Look, if you need money, I can give you some money. Don't say that to me. You may be able to get away with that with the old man. You buy him off with your Hollywood blood money, but not me. I get my own money my own way. I was just making an offer. Yeah, well, you keep it to yourself. So the most fucking monotonous crickets I've ever heard in my life. I kind of like the sound. Yeah. You know, you're supposed to be able to tell the temperature by the number of pulses. How do you do that? I don't know. Some woman told me that. She was a botanist, so I believed her. Where'd you meet her? On the desert. I've been spending a lot of time on the desert. What were you doing out there? I forget. Well, I had me a pit bull there for a while, but I lost him. Pit bull? Yeah, fighting dog. Man, I made some big money off of that little dog. Real big money. You could come up north with me, you know. Now, what's up there? My family. Oh, yeah, that's right. You got the wife and the kids now, don't you? Yeah, you know, you could spend a couple of days, see how you like it. I got an extra room. Yeah, it's too cold up there. You want to sleep for a while? I don't sleep. I never realized the old lady was so security minded. How do you mean? Well, she got locks on everything. What's she got that's so valuable? Antiques, I guess. I don't know. Antiques? It's the same old crap we always had lying around. Well, I guess they have personal value to her. Personal value. Yeah. Just a bunch of junk. Idaho decals. Now, who in the hell wants to eat off a plate with the state of Idaho staring at you in the face? Well, it must mean something to her or she wouldn't save it. Yeah. Well, personally, I don't need to be invaded by Idaho when I'm eating. When I'm eating, I'm home. I'm not drifting, I'm home. So, did you go out last night? Yeah, I went out, what about it? Just wondered. Well, you don't sleep anyway, do you? You are pretty smart, aren't you? How do you mean? I mean, you never had any more on the ball than I did. And here you are getting yourself invited into prominent people's Houses? They're not so prominent. Well, they are a hell of a lot more prominent than the houses I get invited to. Well, you invite yourself. That's true, I do. In fact, I have been in some very nice houses in my day. And I never even went to an Ivy League school either. Want some breakfast or something? Breakfast? Look, don't worry about me, pal. Myself. Where'd you walk to last night? Up into the foothills. Up into the San Gabriels. The heat was driving me crazy. Well, wasn't it hot out on the desert? It's a different kind of heat. Out there it's clean. Cools off at night. There's a nice little breeze. Where were you? The Mojave? Yeah, the Mojave. That's right. God, I haven't been out there in years. Up here, it's different. Now, this country is real 
different. Well, it's been built up. Built up. Wiped out is more like it. I hardly even. I hardly even recognize it. Yeah, and the foothills are the same now, huh? Yeah, mostly. Well, it's funny going up there, the smells and everything. We used to catch snakes up there, remember? You caught snakes. Yeah. And you would run around pretending you were Geronimo or some damn thing. I enjoyed my imagination, all right? Is that what you call it? <laughs> well, looks like you're still enjoying it. So you just wandered around up there, huh? Yeah. With a purpose. See any houses? A couple. A couple of real nice ones. One of them didn't even have a dog. I walked right up and I stuck my head in the window. What kind of place was it? It was like a paradise. Kind of place you wish you grew up in, you know? That's the kind of place you wish you grew up in. <sighs> yeah, sure. Why not? I thought you hated that kind of stuff. Well, you never really knew too much about me, did you? Why'd you go out to the desert in the first place? I was on my way to see the old man. So you just passed through there? Yeah. Three months of passing through. You lived on the Mojave for three months? Yeah, what's the matter with that? By yourself? Mostly. Well, didn't you miss people? <laughs> people? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd go crazy if I had to spend three nights in a motel by myself. Well, they got people in motels, don't they? They're strangers. Well, aren't you the friendly type? Look, Lee, I'm going to be having somebody come by here a little later. Uh-huh. Lady friend? No, uh, a producer. Uh, what's he produce? Film. Uh, movies, you know. Ah, movies. Motion pictures. Real big wig, huh? Yeah. Well, what's he coming here for? Well, uh, we have to talk about a project. What do you mean a project? What's a project? A script. Oh, that's what you're doing with all those papers. Yeah. Well, what's the project about? Look, it doesn't matter. The main thing is we need to be alone for a while so we can talk. Oh, I get it. You want me out of the picture? Well, not exactly. I just need to be alone with him for a couple of hours so we can talk. What, are you afraid I'll embarrass you? Is that it? I'm not afraid you'll embarrass me. Okay. I'll tell you what. You give me the keys to your car and I'll be back here at about six or so. Does that give you enough time? I'm not loaning in my car, Lee. You want me to just get lost? Is that it? Take a hike! Look, it's gonna be hard enough for me to deal with this character on my own without any distractions. What, you don't know this guy? No, I don't know him. He's a producer. You never get to know a producer. What, are you trying to hustle him? Is that it? No, I'm not trying to hustle him. I'm trying to work out a deal. Well, what kind of deal? Convince him it's a worthwhile story. No, he's not convinced? I'll convince him for you! Look, if I loan you my car, we have it back here by six. On the button, with a full tank of gas. Forget about the gas. Hey, these days, gas is gold, old buddy. Hey, you remember that car that I used to loan you? Yeah. 44, flathead. Look, Lee, it's not that I don't want to loan you my car, right? Well, you are loaning me a car. I know, I just, I wish I wasn't down here on business, you know? I'd like to spend some more time with you. Well, I thought you said it was art that you were doing. Try to get it back here at six, all right? Yeah. No sweat. Hey, you know, if this story of yours doesn't go over with this guy, you tell him that I got a couple of projects that he might be interested in. Real, commercial, full of suspense. True to life stuff.
Well, to tell you the truth, Austin, I have never felt so confident about a project in quite a long time. Well, that's good to hear, Saul. I am absolutely convinced we can get this thing off the ground. I mean, we'll have to make a sale to television, and that means getting a major star. Wait, don't you think we need a first draft before we approach a star? No, no, not at all. I, I don't think it's necessary. Maybe a brief synopsis. <laughs> I don't want you to write a word until we get some seed money. It's fine with me. I mean, it's a great story. It's just the story alone. You've really managed to capture something this time. Really sorry about that, Austin. It's all right. Uh, I thought it was way past six already. We were just finished. This is my uh, brother, Lee. I'm very happy to meet you. I can't tell you how happy I am to meet you, sir. Saul Kimmer. Mr. Kipper. Uh, Kimmer. Lee's been living out on the desert. Oh, uh, that's terrific. Uh, Palm Springs. Yeah, right in that area, near uh, Bob Hope Drive. Oh, I love it out there. And the golf, I don't know if you play golf, but the golf is just about the best. I play a lot of golf. Is that right? Yeah, in fact, I was hoping I'd run into somebody down here who played a little golf. You know, I haven't been looking for a partner. Uh, well, I, um... Well, what kind of handicap do you have, Saul? I'm just a Sunday duffer, really. Well, we ought to get together sometime and have a little game. Austin, do you play? No, I don't. Well, how about tomorrow morning? Well, I, um... Several appointments. No, I mean really, really crack it down while the dew is still thick on the fairway. Sounds really great. Austin could be our caddy. Now that's an idea. <laughs> I don't know the first thing about golf. Ah, uh, there's nothing to it. I'll give you a quick rundown on the club faces, show you a few pointers on the basic swing. We might even let you hit it a couple of times. What do you think, Saul? Why not? I think it'd be great. I ha haven't had any exercise in weeks. That's the spirit. We'll have a little orange juice right afterwards. Orange juice? Yeah! Vitamin C! Orange juice! Nothing like a shot of orange juice after a round of golf. In a hot shower. Snapping towels at each other's privates. A real sense of fraternity. Well, you make it sound very inviting, I must say. That's a date. Boy, I sure am sorry I busted in on y'all in the middle of your meeting here. We were just about finished anyway. I just got Austin's color TV back from the shop. Now we can watch a little amateur boxing. Why don't I call you tomorrow, Saul? We can get together, we can have some lunch or something. That'll be terrific. Uh, right after the golf. Oh, right. So, Austin was telling me that you were interested in stories. Well, we developed certain projects this we feel have commercial potential. Well, we lots, of action, certain lots of action. Westerns? Uh, sometimes. I'll give you a ring, Saul. Oh, I got a Western that would knock your lights out. Oh, really? Yeah, contemporary Western, based on a true story. Of course, I'm not a writer like my brother here, you know. Yeah, I'm not a man of the pen. Well... I mean, I can tell you a story off the tongue. I just can't put it down on paper. Well, that don't make a difference, does it? Uh, no, not really. I haven't seen a good Western since Lonely of the Brave. You remember that movie? Uh, no, I'm afraid of Hell of a movie. Kirk Douglas. You remember that movie, Austin? Yes. Yeah, a man dies for the love of a horse. Is that right? Yeah. The rain is coming down at the end of it. The horse is screaming, and then there's a shot. Bam! Just a single shot, then nothing but the sound of the rain. And Kirk Douglas is riding in the ambulance. He's riding away from the scene of the accident. And when he hears that shot, he knows that his horse has died. He knows. And you see his eyes. And his eyes die right inside of his face. And his eyes close. And you know that he's died too. You know that Kirk Douglas has died from the death of his horse. Well, it uh, sounds like a great movie, you know. I'll have to try and catch it sometime. Uh, well, Austin, I have to hit the freeway before rush hour. I'll give you a ring, Saul. 
And so you think there's room for a real Western these days? Like a true-to-life Western? Well, I don't see why not. Uh, what, why don't you tell the story to Austin and have him write a little outline? Will you take a look at it then? Sure, I'll give it a read-through. That's great! It would just be my opinion, of course. Well, that's all I want, just an opinion. Well, it was great meeting you, and I'll, um... I'll give you a call tomorrow about the golf. Oh, right. Well, Austin's got your number, right? Uh, yes. So long, Saul. <laughs> give me the keys. All right. Read it back to me. I'm not reading it back to you. You can read it when we're finished. Now, what happens when he leaves Texas? Is he ready to leave Texas? No, he's not ready to leave Texas. Well, he's, he's right at the border. He's a good 50 miles from the border. A lot can happen in 50 miles. It's only an outline. Well, you can't leave things out, even if it's an outline. Okay, okay, let's just get it done. All right. So he's in the truck and he's got his horse trailer and his horse. Right. And he sees this other guy coming up behind him in another truck and the truck's pulling a gooseneck. What's a gooseneck? Cattle trailer. You know, the kind with the gooseneck, it goes right down into the bed of the pickup. Oh, all right. It's important. Okay, I've got it. So this other guy's got his horse all saddled up in the back of the gooseneck. So both of these guys got their horses right alongside of them. You see? I understand. So the first guy suddenly realizes two things. The guy in front. Right. What were the two things? Number one, he realizes that the guy coming up behind him is the husband of the woman he's been... Oh, all right. And number two, he's in the middle of tornado country. What's tornado country? And number three... I thought there was only two. There's three. There's a third unforeseen realization. And what's that? He's running out of gas. Come on, Lee. What do you mean, come on? It's too... Write it down! It's too... It's too what? It's too much like real life? No, it's not enough like real life. Things don't happen like that. What? Men don't fuck other men's women? Yes, but they don't end up chasing each other across the panhandle through tornado country. And they don't have horses conveniently long with them when they run out of gas. And they don't run out of gas either. This is my story. And one of these guys runs out of gas. It's just a dumb excuse to get them into a chase scene. It's already a chase scene. They've been chasing each other for days. So now they're supposed to abandon their trucks, climb on their horses, and chase each other into the mountains? There aren't any mountains in the panhandle? It's flat. God damn those crickets. Shut up out there. This place is like a fucking nut house. I mean, how are you supposed to think? You want to take a break? No, I don't want to take a break. This is my last chance to get this thing done. All right, take it easy. I'm going to be leaving this area. I don't have time to mess around. Where are you going? Never mind where I'm going. That's got nothing to do with you. I just got to get this thing done. You know what? I'm not like you being a parasite off of other fools. I just got to do this and get out. A parasite? Me? Yeah, you. Give me back my keys, Lee. Not until you write this thing. You're gonna write this outline thing for me, or that car's gonna wind up in Arizona with a different paint job. You think you can force me to write this? I was doing you a favor. Get off of your high horse, will you? Let's sit down and not get upset. See if we can just get through this. You're not even gonna show it to him, are you? What? This outline thing. You got no intention of even showing it to him. You're just doing it because you're afraid of me. You can show it to him yourself. I will, boy. I'm gonna read it to him out on the golf course. But I'm not afraid of you either. Well, how come you're doing it? So I can get my keys back. What are you gonna do now, boy? Kick me out? I'm not gonna kick you out. You either. couldn't kick me out, boy! I know. You could call the police. You're my brother. 
Well, that don't mean a thing. You go down to the L.A. Police Department and you ask them what kind of people kill each other the most. What do you think they'll say? Family people. Brothers. This isn't the same. No, no. What makes it different? We're not insane. We're not driven to acts of violence like that. Not over a dumb movie script. Now sit down. Maybe we're too intelligent, huh? One of us has even got an Ivy League diploma. Look, Lee, I'll write this thing out for you. Now come on, let's just get through it, all right? Nah. I think there's easier money out there. I don't need this shit. No, really, look, I'll write it out for you. I think it's a great idea. No, you got your own work to do. No, I mean, it'd be really fantastic if you could sell this, you know? Turn it into a movie. You think so, huh? Absolutely. I mean, you could really turn your life around, you know? Change things. Well, you could get me a house, maybe. Sure, you could get a house. You could get a whole ranch if you wanted a to. A ranch? I could get a ranch? Of course you could. Do you know what a screenplay sells for these days? No, what's it sell for? A whole lot of money. Thousands? Yeah, thousands. Millions? Well... We could get the old man out of Hawk, then. Maybe. Maybe? What do you mean, maybe? I mean, it might take more than money. Well, you were just telling me it would turn my whole life around. Well, why wouldn't it help him? He's not gonna change. Let's leave the old man out of it. Oh. I get it. He's not gonna change. But I am, right? I'll just turn myself inside out. I bet I could be just like you, huh? Yeah, sitting around, and dreaming stuff up, and getting paid to dream. It's not all that easy. It's not, huh? No, there's a lot of work involved. And what's the toughest part, deciding whether you're gonna jog or play tennis? <laughs> well, look, you can do whatever you want. Borrow the car, come in and out. It doesn't matter to me, it's not my house. I'll help you write this thing, or not. Oh, so suddenly you're at my service, is that it? What do you want to do, Lee? I'll tell you what I'd do if I still had a dog. You really want to know? What? I head up to Ventura and I cook me up a little match. A lot of money in dog fighting. Big money. Why don't we try to see this through, Lee? I mean, maybe you've really got something here. What do you think? Maybe so. I mean, you think it's such a big idea. Besides, I always wondered what it would be like to be you. You did? Yeah. I used to picture you walking around some campus, your arms full of books. <laughs> That's funny, because I always used to picture you somewhere. Yeah, what would you picture me? Different places. You're always on some adventure. Yeah. And I used to say to myself, Lee's got the right idea. He's out there in the world, and here I am. What am I doing? Well, you're setting yourself up for something. I guess. Well. Better get started on this thing, then. He really liked it, huh? Well, he wouldn't have gave me the clubs if he didn't like it. He gave you the clubs? Yeah, I told you he gave me the clubs. I gave me the bag, too. I thought he just loaned them to you. No, he said it was part of the advance. A gesture of his good faith. He's giving you an advance? Yeah, what is so amazing about that? Do you know how many people spend their entire lives down here just trying to break into the business? I got no idea. How many? How much of an advance is he giving you? Oh, plenty. Now, we were talking big money out there. Well, ninth hole is where I sealed the deal. He made a firm commitment? Absolutely. Well, I know Saul and he doesn't fool around when he says he likes something. Uh, I let him get too up on me going into the back nine. You should have seen his face when I pulled out that old pitching wedge and I plopped it pin high, two feet from the cup. 
<laughs> he about shit his pants. Of course, there's no contract yet. Nothing's final until it's on paper. Oh, that's final, all right. There's no way he's gonna back out of it now. We gambled for it. Saul gambled? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he liked the outline already, so he wasn't risking much. I just guaranteed it with my short game. You're gonna get a nice fee for writing that script, of course. I'm writing the script? No, that's what he said. But I'm already working on a script. I don't have time to write two scripts. No, he's gonna drop that other one. You mean mine? He's gonna drop mine and do yours instead? Now look, Austin. It's just beginner's luck, you know? Oh, he's not gonna be in. He told me he wouldn't be in until late this afternoon. I can't believe this. Are you sure he said that? Why would he drop mine? Well, that's what he said. Well, he can't do that without telling me first. Well, I was kind of surprised myself, to tell you the truth. But he was real enthusiastic about my story. He liked your story? Yeah, what is so amazing about that? It's stupid. It's the dumbest story I ever heard in my life. Hey, now hold on. That's my story you're talking about. Two lame brains chasing each other across Texas? I mean, who do you think is going to go see a film like that? It's not a film. It's a movie. There's a big difference. That's something that Saul told me. Oh, he did, huh? Yeah, he said, in this business, we make movies, American movies. Leave the films to the French. She got real intimate with Saul, huh? I think he liked me a whole lot, to tell you the truth. I think he felt that I was somebody that he could confide in. What'd you do, beat him up or something? Hey, I've about had it with your insults, buddy. Yeah, well, you must have done something to him. Threatened him or something. I convinced him! Oh, Jesus. You didn't hurt him, did you? I didn't do nothing to him. You can't come into this town and start pushing people around. They're gonna put you away. I didn't push anybody around. I beat them fair and square. They can't put a finger on me. Anyway, I'm gone. I can come in through the window and out through the door. You're the one who's stuck. Doesn't make any sense. It's only to throw my idea out the window. I've been talking to him for months. Everything's riding on this project. What's your idea? I'm not telling. Ha! Huh? You're afraid I'll steal it, huh? Woo! -hoo. The competition's getting a little too close to home, isn't it? Where did Saul say he was going? He's taking my idea to a couple studios. That's my outline, you know. You got no right to be peddling it around. You weren't ready to take credit for it last night. Give me my keys. What? I want my keys back. Where are you going? Just give me my keys. Take a drive. I gotta get out of here for a while. Where you going? I might just drive out to the desert for a while. I gotta think. You can think here just as good. Now this is a perfect setup for thinking. We got some writing to do here, boy. Relax. We're partners now. Now you tell him, Mr. Kipper. Kimmer. Kimmer, you tell him what you told me. He don't believe me. I don't want to hear. It's really not a big issue, Austin. I was simply amazed by your brother's story amazed. and- Amazed? You lost a bet. You gambled with my material. That's really besides the point, Austin. I'm ready to go all the way with your brother's story. I think it has a great deal of merit. Go tell it to the executives. Tell us if somebody's gonna turn it into a package deal or something. It's not as though we can't do both. We're big enough for that, aren't we? We? I can't do both. I don't know about we. What did I tell you, Saul? He's being totally unsympathetic. Austin, there's no point in our going to another screenwriter for this. Your brothers. There's a familiarity with the material. There's no familiarity with the material. None. I don't know what Tornado Country is, and I don't want to know. He's a bigger hustler than you are. Hey, hold on. I persuaded Saul here that you were the right man for the job. I'm the one who wrote the fucking outline. You can't even spell. Your brother told me about the situation with your father. 
What? That's right. Now, we got big studio money standing behind this thing just on the basis of your outline. What do you tell you about my father? Well, that he's destitute. He needs money. That's right, he does. And this little assignment is supposed to go to the old man? Is that what this is? It's a big slice, Austin. I already gave him money. He drank it all up. Well, this is a different deal here. We can set up a trust for your father. It can be doled out to him in parcels, so we can't misuse it. Oh, yeah? And who's doing the doling? Your brother volunteered. That's right, I'll make sure he uses it for groceries. I'm not writing this crap for you or for anybody else. This is an easy 300 grand, just for a first draft. We've got three different studios all trying to cut each other's throats to get this material. That's how hot it is. Oh yeah, then you can afford to give me a commission on the outline. And while you're at it, why don't you get the genius over here an agent so it doesn't get burned? Saul's gonna be my agent. Isn't that right, Saul? That's right. Your brother has really got something. Raw talent. He's got a lot of balls is what he's got. 300,000, Austin. Just for a first draft. I'm not writing it. I see, well. Well, we'll just have to go to another writer then. Right, Saul? I'm sorry about this, Austin. I mean, I was hoping we could continue both things, but now I don't see how that's possible. So you're dropping my idea altogether, is that it? I have to go with what my instincts tell me. I've got everything riding on this, Saul. It's my only shot. You lost a gamble, and now you're trying to tell me you like his story? It's, it's as phony as Hopalong Cassidy. It has the ring of truth, Austin. Truth? So what? It is true! Something about the real West. Why? Because it's got horses? Your brother is speaking from experience. So am I. But nobody's interested in love these days, Austin. L let's face it. That's right. He's been camped out on the desert for three months talking to Cactus. What does he know about what people want to see on the screen these days? I drive on the freeway every day, okay? I swallow the smog. I'm the one who's in touch, not him. I have to go now, Austin. There's no such thing as the West anymore. It's a dead issue. I've always gone on my hunches. Always. And I've never been wrong. I'll talk to you tomorrow, Lee. All right, Mr. Kimmer. Maybe we can have some lunch. Fine with me. Knock it off, will you? I'm trying to concentrate here. Now you're trying to concentrate. <laughs> Between you, the coyotes, and the crickets, the thought don't have much of a chance. Between me, the coyotes, and the crickets. What a great title. Oh, I don't need a title, I need a thought. A thought? Here's a thought for you. I'm not asking for your thoughts. I got my own thoughts. Are you gonna write an entire script on your own, huh? That's right. Yeah, well, here's a thought for ya. Saul Kimmer. But shut the up, <laughs> will you? Thinks we're the same person. You know what? Go outside and drink. For the first time since your arrival, I'm finally enjoying your company, and now you want me to go outside and drink alone? That's right. Yeah. I still have the sound of the crickets to contend with. The sound of the police helicopters prowling over the neighborhood, hunting for the likes of you. Hey. I'm a screenwriter now. I'm legitimate. A screenwriter. That's right. I'm on salary. That is more than I can say for you. I got an advance coming. This is true. This is very true. Maybe I should try my hand at your trade, since you're doing so good at mine. Ha! <laughs> You couldn't steal a toaster without losing your lunch. You don't think I could steal into somebody's house and take a toaster? Go take a shower or something, will you? How much you want to bet? All right. I will bet you your car that you can't steal a toaster without getting busted. You already got my car. All right, your house then. Well, what are you going to give me? 
You ain't got nothing to give me. I'll give you shared screen credit. How about that? I don't want my name on that piece of shit. You got anything of value? I'm gonna kick your ass out of here in a minute. Oh, so now suddenly I'm the intruder? I'm trying to do some screenwriting here! Well, you got everything you need. You got groceries, you got coffee, you got a car, you got a contract. I'm just gonna leave you alone for a while. Where are you going? Don't worry about me. I'm not the one to worry about. Where are you gonna go, Austin? I'm gonna make a little tour. You want to call your wife for you or something? My wife? Yeah, maybe she can help you out, talk to you or something. She's 500 miles away north. I'm gonna steal me a toaster. I might even commit bigger crimes. Crimes beyond the imagination. Just hang on a minute, Austin. Why? You don't need my help, right? Look, everybody down here is living the life indoors. You sound safe. just like the old man now. Yeah, well, we all sound alike when we're sloshed. Well, maybe if we could work on this thing together, we could bring him back out here. You know, we'll get him settled down someplace. I don't want him out here. I've had it with him. I went all the way out there. I went out of my way. I gave him money. All he did was play Al Jolson records and spit at me. Just help me out a little with the characters, all right? What characters? The guys in the story. You know, I mean, I can hear it in my head, but I just can't put it down on paper. What characters? You know what I'm talking about, Austin. Those are illusions of characters. I know, I understand that. Those are fantasies of a long lost boyhood. I need to write something out here. Then do it. I will. I just need some advice. What's the matter? Feeling a little doubt now? I just need a little help is all. It will not from me. I'm retired. I'd give you half of the money, and I'd never bother you again. I promise you. You'd disappear. I would. Nobody can disappear. The old man tried that. Look what it got him. Lost all his teeth, one at a time. So finally, he decides he's got to have them all taken out. But he doesn't have any money, so what does he do? Begs the government. GI Bill or some damn thing. And they send him out the money. They did? Yeah, but it's not enough money. So what does he do? I don't know. He locates a Mexican dentist in Juarez and he starts hitchhiking down towards the border. Hitchhiking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now how long you think it takes a man his age to hitchhike to the border? I don't know. Eight days it takes him. Eight days. And his teeth are falling out on the blacktop and, and he, nobody will pick him up because his mouth's all full of blood. And so finally, he stumbles into the dentist. The dentist takes all his teeth and all his money, and there he is in Mexico with his gums sewed up and his pockets empty. That's it? Well, that's when I went down to see him. But all he wants to do is drink martinis. So we asked the waitress for one of those doggy bags, you know, to put the chop suey in so he could take it home. So he takes his false teeth out and he lays them on the table. And we asked the waitress for one of them doggy bags so he can take his chop suey home with him. So he drops his false teeth in the chop suey bag with the chop suey. And then we go out up and down the highway hitting all the bars. And on one of those bars.
general lack of toast in the neighborhood this morning. Many, many unhappy, bewildered breakfast faces. Well, I suppose it's best not to think of the victims. Is that the right psychology? What? Not to think of the victims. What victims? The victims of crime. Is it a prerequisite for a criminal not to have a conscience? Or ask a criminal. What are you gonna do with all those toasters? That is the dumbest thing I ever saw in my life. I've got hundreds of dollars of household appliances here. <laughs> and how many hundreds of dollars did you walk right past? It was toasters you challenged me to. I never challenged you. You don't have to take it out of my laptop. Is it too late to call a woman? Hey, you know any women? I'm a married man. No, I mean a local woman. You need a little breakfast. How about some toast? I don't need toast. I need a woman. A woman isn't the answer. It never was. I'm not talking about permanent. I'm talking about temporary. Let's just test the merits of these little demons. How much gas you got in your car? You think there's enough gas to get me to Bakersfield? Bakersfield? Ugh. What's in Bakersfield? Never mind what's in Bakersfield. You think there's enough gas in the goddamn car? Sure. Sure. You could care less, right? You would let me run out of gas on the grapevine. You could give a shit. We, I'd say there was enough gas to get you just about anywhere with your determination and guts. Red sails in the sunset, we out on the blue. <laughs> hey, knock it off, will you? This is long distance here. Yeah, operator. Uh, first off, I want to know the area code to Bakersfield. Right, Bakersfield. Okay, good. Now I want to know if you can help me track somebody down. No, I mean just a number, just a phone number, okay? Okay, the name is Melly Ferguson. Melly. What? I don't know. Melanie, okay. Melanie Ferguson, okay. What? How could that be? You got 10 Melanie Ferguson's in Bakersfield? How could that be? Okay. Well, give me all 10 of them. Hang on a second. Get me a pen. I don't have a pen. Well, give me a pencil then. I don't have a pencil. Hang on a second, operator. You're a writer and you don't have a pen or a pencil. I'm not a writer. You're a writer. I'm on the phone here. Get me a pen or a pencil. I gotta watch the toast. Hang on a second, operator. I gotta... Dude, I can't believe it. Here I am. Isn't there a pen or a pencil in this house?
Well, who lives in this house anyway? Our mother. Well, how come she doesn't have a pen or a pencil? Ah! Yeah, look, operator, I'm... Operator? Operator! You're probably better off staying with me anyway. I'll take care of you. I don't need taken care of. Not by you, anyway. Toast is almost ready. I don't want any toast! Well, you gotta eat something. I mean, you can't just drink. How long have we been drinking, anyway? Maybe it was Fresno. Do you know the area code to Fresno? How could I have lost that number? She was beautiful. She just forget about that, Lee. Forget about the woman. She had green eyes. Green eyes do to me? Yeah, I know, but you're not gonna get it on with her now anyway. It's, it's dawn already. Yeah. It's dawn? Yeah. Well, let's just have some toast and then we can, you know, start our. What day. is this bullshit with toast? I don't want any toast. How many times do I gotta tell you? Sun's coming up. <laughs> Makes me feel like anything's possible, you know? Like, like a beginning. I love beginnings. Yeah, I've always been partial to endings myself. Why don't you take me with you, Lee? What? What if I come with you out to the desert? You wouldn't last a day out yeah. there, pal. That's what you said about the toasters. A toaster's got nothing to do with the desert. I could make it, Lee. I'm not that helpless. I can cook. Cook? I can. So what? You can cook. Toast. I can get water from condensation. It's not something that you learn out of a Boy Scout handbook. You could teach me. Dude, what are you, crazy or something? You went to college, and you want to learn how to live out in the desert? I do. I really do, Lee. There's nothing down here for me anymore. You know, it was different when we were kids. I keep finding myself getting off the freeway at familiar landmarks that turn out to be unfamiliar. Wandering down streets I don't even recognize anymore. Fields that don't even exist anymore. Well, there's no sense in crying about it now. There's nothing real down here, Lee. Least of all me. Well, I can't save you from that. You could take me with you. No dice, pal. You can take me with you, Lee. What do you actually think that I choose to live out in the middle of nowhere? Do you? You think it's like some kind of philosophical decision I took or something? I'm living out there because I can't make it here. And you're bitching to me about your success. I'd cash it all in in a second. That's the truth. I can't believe this. Take me with you. Stop saying that. You're worse than a dog. You want some toast? I'll tell you what. I'll do, little brother. I might just consider making you a little deal, a little trade. And you write up the screenplay thing for me, just like I tell you, every move. Every time they run out of gas, they run out of gas. If they want to stay in Texas, by God, they stay in Texas. And if you finish that up for me, and you put my name on it, and I get all the rights, and I get all the money, if you do that for me, I'll sure enough take you with me to the desert. How's that sound?
is a deal. All right. Uh, read, read it back to me. Just a second. Just read what you got. I can't keep up. It's not the same as if I had a laptop. Well, just read what you got so far. Forget about the rest. Luke says... Luke? His name is Luke? All right. We'll go back and change the names later. What's he say? Come on! Come on! He says, I know this prairie like the back of my hand. No, no, no. That's not what I said. I never said that. That's what I wrote. I never said the back of my hand. That's stupid. I mean, that's one of those, uh, what do you call it? When something's been said like a thousand times before. Um, a cliche? Yeah, cliche. That's what it is. The back of my hand? That is stupid. Well, that's what you said. It's not what I said! And even if it is, that's where you're supposed to come in. You're supposed to change it to something better. Well, how am I supposed to do that and write what you say at the same time? You just do it, that's all. You hear a dumb line and you change it to something better. That's your job. All right. What are you changing it to? I'm not changing it. I'm just trying to catch up. We'll change it! Um, how about... I'm on intimate terms with this prairie. I'm on intimate terms with this prairie. I'm on intimate terms. Intimate. That means sexual, doesn't it? Well. well he's on sexual terms with the prairie? It doesn't necessarily have to mean sexual. It means close, personal. Well, how's it sound? Put it into the line there. It'll go something like this. I told you you were a fool to follow me in here. I'm on intimate terms with this prairie. That's good, I like that. You do? Yeah, don't you? Sure. Man, sounds original now. That's good, now we're cooking. He's on intimate terms with this prairie. That sounds real mysterious and kind of threatening at the same time. Good. Yeah. Ma. Mom? What are you doing back? I'm back. Well, here, let me take those for you. I wasn't expecting you back so soon. How was Alaska? Fine. Do you see any igloos? No, just glaciers. Cold, huh? Not really. Well, it must have been colder than this here. I mean, we've been having a real scorcher here. Oh? <laughs> yeah, it must be in the hundreds here. You want me to take your coat, Mom? No. What happened here? Oh. Um. Me and Lee, we're, we're just kind of celebrating them, you know. Celebrating? Yeah. Uh, Lee sold the screenplay. Lee did. Yeah. Not you. No. Uh, Lee. You sold a screenplay? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and uh, me and Lee were going out to the desert to live. Oh, you're going to go out and live with your father? No. Let's see, what are all these toasters doing? Oh, well, we had a kind of contest. Contest? Yeah. What happened to your shirt? Oh, I was sweating like a pig, so I took it off. This place is one hell of a mess, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Don't worry about it, Mom. I'll clean it up. I just, I didn't know you'd be coming back so soon. I didn't either. That reminds me. <laughs> I bet you can't guess who's in town. Go on, try and guess. What do you mean, Mom? <laughs> Somebody very important has come to town. 
Somebody very important. Picasso. Picasso's in town. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> Picasso's dead, Mom. No, Picasso isn't dead. He, I read it on the bus. Uh, we have to go down there and see him. Mom. Oh, it won't take long. We just hop in the car and go down there. It's a chance to meet him. We're going to be leaving here, Mom. Both of you? Well, no, we were thinking about that before, but now... No, I no, no, we are. It's been decided. We're leaving. You can't leave. You've got a family. I'm leaving. I'm getting out of here. I don't think that Austin's really cut out for the desert, do you? No, he's not. I'm going with you, Lee. He's too thin. Yeah, he'd just burn up out there. We just gotta finish his screenplay and then we're gonna take off. Now come on, let's get back to work. I can't work under these conditions here. It is too hot. Then we'll do it out on the desert. Don't be telling me what we're gonna do. Don't shout in the house. We're just, we're just gonna... gonna have to postpone this whole deal here. We can't postpone it. I'm doing everything you told me. I, I'm writing down exactly what you tell me. But you were right all along, see? It is a dumb story. Two lame brains chasing each other across Texas. That's what you said, isn't it? I never said that. You don't mind, do you? What are you doing? We made a deal! Uh, uh, could, couldn't you borrow some of the plastic ones instead? Plastic's not the same. Plastic's not the same at all, Mom. What I need is something authentic, you know, something to keep me in touch. Don't worry, I'll get them back to you. You can't just drop the whole thing, Lee! Ugh! shouldn't fight in the house, so go fight outside. I'm not fighting. I'm leaving. All this town does is drive a man insane. I mean, look at what it's done to Austin there. I am not gonna let that happen to me. You're not going anywhere. You're not taking my car. You're not taking the shit. You're not going anywhere! You have to stop fighting in the house. There's a lot of room outside. You got the whole outdoors. Give me back my keys, Lee! Give me my keys! Take them out! Take them out! You're not killing him, are you? I don't know if I'm killing him. I'm stopping him! Well, you ought to let him breathe a little bit. Throw the keys out, Lee! <laughs> You ain't to me those keys, would you, Mom? Well, not till you stop choking him. Kill me if I stop choking him. He won't kill you. He's your brother. Just get me the keys, would you? Oh, you gonna let him go? Give me the keys. <laughs> well, you can't kill him. I can't see. I'm going to the desert. Nobody's stopping me. Well, I'm going to check into a motel. I can't take this anymore. This is, this is worse than being homeless. No! No! Stay! Stay! It was the worst feeling, being up there in Alaska. Staring out a window. I never felt so desperate before. And then, when I thought about that, because of thing, I... Stay! This is your house, Mom! I don't recognize it at all. Me! Me! Just give me a little head start, okay? Just let me get to my car, okay? Me? Me? Lee? Lee?